we have got the Broncos 53-man roster for now. I expect GM George Payton to make some more moves over the next 24 hours. But for the time being, we are going to recap all of the roster cuts, moves, trades, injury designation, everything that's happened under the sun related to the Broncos in the last 12 or so hours. Plus, we're going to go through the entire depth chart, see where everyone stands, and what we've got for the 53-man roster for the time being. Let's look at some roster moves the Broncos have made today because they have been busy from trading Malik Reed this morning to moving on from some notable veterans like Josh Johnson. Kendall Hinton, we did a lot of surprise cut candidates talk on this channel. That was a name I did not see being moved on from this year. I guess George Payton wants to just spice things up and give a different look in the wide receiver room for some of the younger guys. Brandon Johnson was my preseason hero. He was put on IR today, which is very different than being put on IR tomorrow. That means his season is done, but he'll be with the Broncos for the whole season, rehabbing with the team. Seth Williams was also moved on from Eric Tomlinson, a veteran that they cut Fully expect him to be joining the team tomorrow once they make some roster moves to free up some space by putting play players on short-term IR. Natay Moody, I, I did not see this happening. He was competing for a starting guard job just a month ago. Now he's done. McTelvin Najim, Mike Purcell also moved on from today. Sam Martin cut yesterday for the new punter. Corliss Waitman. But let's run through the depth chart here, starting in the QB room. Just Russ and Brett Rippon for the time being. Don't be surprised if the Broncos decide to bring in another quarterback, right? They might opt to try and upgrade the backup position for now. I hope Brett Rippon holds on to the job because I just like him succeeding. It's a great story to see a UDFA like him rise the ranks and be a backup for one of the game's best right now, but just keep an eye on that position. Now, speaking of Russell Wilson, if you are ready for real football to be playing on TV and for Russ to torch the Seahawks week one, Monday night from Lumen Field, go ahead and hit that thumbs up icon because preseason football is over. It's done. We no longer have to discuss wide receiver six. We can watch Russell Wilson suit up in a Broncos uniform for real for the first time. And if you're excited about that, make sure you click that thumbs up button. Let's move on to the running back room here. Not a whole lot of surprises. Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon, and Mike Boone are your three running backs with Andrew Beck as that tight end slash fullback. Now the wide receiver room is a little bit more interesting. Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, your top three guys. Surprised to see Kendall Hinton not on this list. Montreal Washington, of course, was a lock to make this roster. Tyree Cleveland who has been dealing with a throat injury for the last month. He makes this roster. We know Dwayne Stukes, the new special teams coordinator, was raving about Cleveland earlier this week and his special teams abilities. I think that was a big factor in putting Cleveland on this roster over a Kendall Hinton or Seth Williams. And then finally, the UDFA to keep the streak alive, Jalen Virgil out of App State. He makes the 53-man roster initially. That is the 18 of 19th previous season where a UDFA makes the Broncos' initial 53-man roster. As for the tight end depth chart here, Albert Okuebunam, Greg Dulcich, and Eric Saubert, your top three tight ends. Now, here's what I'm going to say about Greg Dulcich. He has been dealing with sort of a mysterious hamstring injury for the last... More than just month, it started back in minicamp and you in OTAs. This could be a player who gets put on short-term IR tomorrow, which frees up a roster spot for someone like Eric Tomlinson to come back. Now, Tomlinson was not waived. He was released, which means he is not subject to waivers. He can sign wherever he wants. A lot of times when this happens, there is an agreement between the team and the player of, hey, we don't have a roster spot for you today. We will tomorrow once Dulcich goes on IR, and then we're going to bring you back. So don't pack up your house. You're staying right here. 
Now, unfortunately, this is a bittersweet day across the NFL. A lot of players having their hopes and dreams at least momentarily paused. So let's send some good vibes to everyone who the Broncos released today, put on IR, traded. Drop a good luck in the comment section below. Let them know that Broncos country is not just putting them in the rearview mirror, but rather wishing them the best in their future. Let's move on to the offensive line now, where the Broncos go with just nine guys. Now, Tom Compton is still on the pup list. He will stay like that for the four weeks to start the 2022 season. A bit of a surprising move here, not bringing on Moody, who had knee surgery about three weeks ago. He was like the sixth man for the interior offensive line, right? He was going to be right there with Glasgow to maybe compete with Dalton Reisner's job or the right guard position. Frankly, I did not see this move coming. Cam Fleming, Billy Turner, Calvin Anderson. I like the decision by Payton to keep three tackles when that right tackle job right now is in a bit of a limbo at the moment. Let's switch gears. Let's look opposite of the offensive line and look at the defensive line where the Broncos go as I predicted with five interior defensive linemen. Deshaun Williams, DJ Jones, and Draymond Jones, and then two rookies, Matt Henningsen, the seventh-round pick out of Wisconsin, and then the fifth-round pick out of Ames, Iowa, Ioma Uwazurike. Those are the two backup defensive tackles right there. No McTelvin Ajim and no Mike Purcell. So the Broncos moved on from Purcell to save about $3.5 million. You pair that with the $1.5 million they saved from Sam Martin, about $5 million in savings right there. That could be to bring on another veteran corner or another veteran wide receiver, or it just could be we want to give our rookies a chance to prove themselves in their first season. Let's check out the linebacker depth chart now, which features Randy Gregory, Alex Singleton, Josie Jewell, and Bradley Chubb, most likely as your week one starters. If Jonas Griffith and that elbow is healthy by that time, he will start in place for Alex Singleton. Then on the outside, you've got Nick Benito, Jonathan Cooper, Baron Browning, and Aaron Patrick. Malik Reed was traded to Pittsburgh earlier this morning, and that creates an extra spot for someone like Aaron Patrick, who, myself included, didn't have on my initial 53-man roster projection. But ultimately, Peyton goes, you know what? Special teams was cheeks last year. Let's keep Aaron Patrick. He's a huge asset in that third of the game. We got more roster moves and updates and depth charts to look at. But first, we are in a sub battle with our Seahawks channel here at Chat Sports. We've got a slim lead on them. I put the call out starting yesterday from zero all the way until September 12th, Monday night. 48-44, it currently stands. Let's bury them. Let's do it for Russ in the revenge game. And also, just because Pete Carroll is a coward and wouldn't start Drew Locke to put the trifecta, the ultimate backup, I mean, revenge game for Drew Locke against the Broncos. On to the corners now. Patrick Sertan, Darby, and Kwan Williams. We knew that was happening. Ojemudia was a bit of a 50-50 um, call. He makes the Broncos' initial 53-man roster. I expect him to go on short-term IR tomorrow, which will clear another roster spot for the Broncos to maybe go out and sign a veteran corner, say Joe Hayden, for example, just to help out Damari Mathis because the last thing you necessarily want to see is Damari Mathis, a rookie fourth rounder, being tossed out onto the field week one or week two because of an injury happens and not having any veteran presence right there. And then another UDFA, not this year, but previous, Bassey, he makes the roster. He's been battling injuries the last couple of seasons and flirting with the Broncos and the Chargers roster. Happy to see him back up K1 Williams at that slot corner position. Let's look to the guys in the back of the room here. The safeties, Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson, Caden Stearns, DeLaron Turner-Yell, and P.J. Locke. Listen, when the Broncos made their coaching hires back in February and March, we knew that Jero Evero, the new D.C. coming over from L.A., would want to run a lot of three safety sets. 
So the Broncos are wise, and they keep five safeties, which affords the opportunity for DeLaron Turner-Yell to stick this roster. DJ Reed, a free agent signing from March, was cut as a move here. Now, before we wrap up today's show and look at the rest of the roster moves and depth charts and all that good stuff, there is an awesome deal happening right now at Fanatics. You can't just get one shirt over there. They're going to give you two shirts, 40% off two. So beat the heat and have some Broncos gear for week one, week two, and week three and all that good stuff in September and into October. But here's the thing. We know supply chain can be a bit of a head scratcher right now and frustrating. So make sure you get your orders in now. When you go to chatsports.com slash Broncos combo, I put that link in the comments and the description of today's show for you guys. To round it out on the depth chart side of things here, let's look at the special teams unit, which features Brandon McManus, the new punter in town. Corliss Waitman, who has been bouncing around the NFL a little bit. He punted for the Pittsburgh Steelers for a short period of time. He won the punting battle over Sam Martin this preseason. And then you've got your long snapper, Jacob Bobbinmower. And then Montrell Washington is going to be your punt and quick returner for this season. So after looking at the initial 53-man roster for the Broncos, I want you guys to give it a letter grade, A, B, C, D, or F. Now, this will probably not be the same 53-man roster for week one against the Seahawks. Once you see some guys go to short-term IR, that'll open up more roster spots for players like Eric Tomlinson or maybe a Seth Williams to come back and rejoin the squad. But let's just go off this roster right now. What's your grade for it? I think it's right at a A-. minus. I really do. This defense has to prove some stuff on the front pass rush and on that interior defensive line. But when Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb, and DJ Jones and Draymond Jones all get going towards the middle of the season, this defense is going to be scary. So I give it an A-. minus. Maybe I'm being too biased. Let me know what your letter grade is down below in the comment section. 